Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, and thanks for joining us during this uh, webinar session for the OmniLogic automation system. This system, as, as we're going to see, it is larger than the one we saw yesterday, the OmniHub. So we have a lot more options and a lot more equipment that we are able to control with the OmniLogic. We always like to start showing a little bit of uh, who we are. Hey, was founded in 1925, and we have over 2,500 employees uh, around the world. Just as a reminder on our webinar session, on the first week, we started with uh, variable speed pumps, filtration, and heating. Then we uh, review uh, uh, heat pumps, uh, lighting and water features, and sanitization. And then this week, we're doing automation, including the presentation today for OmniLogic. And next Tuesday, make sure you sign up for the uh, webinars, <clears throat> because we are going to be reviewing the programming for the OmniLogic and the OmniHub. So what is the OmniLogic? OmniLogic is a simple, but very uh, complete automation system. It is modular, so we are able to add components as we see fit and as we need for the installation. And at the same time, it is a system that is always going to be updated because uh, we, through a USB port, we're able to add uh, new configurations and new firmware. Here are some of, the, some of the benefits by offering automation to our customers. It is obviously going to simplify our swimming pool equipment. It is going to simplify the use as well, because now we are going to have total control over the pumps, the lights, heating, and at the same time, all of this is going to replace the standard uh, programming that is done through a time clock. Also keep in mind, please, any questions you have during the webinar, write it down on the, the uh, question section, and we're going to review it at the end. The OmniLogic is able to handle up to three bodies of water. It doesn't matter the base system, we are going to dictate how it is going to work. So we can program it just for a single body, a pool and a spa combination, or up to three different uh, bodies of water. It allows us to control automation, uh, I'm sorry, actuators, heaters, lights, sanitization. We are going to see how we are able to add a salt cell in order to produce our chlorine. And we can control up to, time, up to uh, 10 high voltage relays. Here are some of the control options that we have with the uh, OmniLogic. We are able to use uh, the iPhone or the Android as a method, as a remote control, or we can use a wall-mounted remote. We also have a wireless remote that is able to be used uh, close, to the, close to the water because it is waterproof. So if we have wet hands, that is not an issue. We can still use this uh, controller. And then we also ha have a spa side remote that that one is going to be installed directly on the, the, uh, on the deck of the pool. And then we're also able to use uh, Google Home and Alexa as ways to uh, give commands to our automation system. And here we see the application. Remember this app is available both in Android and I iPhone. And everything that we connect to the OmniLogic we are going to have access in order to be able to set timers and at the same time uh, be able to turn on and off, adjust the speed of variable speed pumps, adjust the uh, temperature on our gas heater, for example, all through the application on your phone. And we also have a view, uh, an application through the uh, a web portal through the computer. So for those customers that prefer to work on the, com on the computer, they have the same amount of access that you would do through the, uh, through the app. And here are some of the commands that we can give Alexa. Uh, for example, we can tell Alexa to increase our 
uh, temperature on the is on the spot to 140 degrees or 40 Celsius. We are also able to change colors by giving commands to Alexa, or we are also able to change the variable speed, uh, the, the speed on our variable speed pumps according to whatever we tell the system. So it makes a lot easier to use the system. It is hands-free. So many times when people are inside the pool, they don't necessarily have their phone handy, but they might have a speaker to where they can just shout a command to it. And here we see some of the other options that uh, these are home automation options, but our OmniLogic is actually able to connect and interact with these home automation systems, including Control 4, Crestron, uh, Elan, Vantage, so now the, the, the pool doesn't have to be on a separate ecosystem. It is actually able to connect to the home automation in case your homeowner has one. And here are some of the ideas on some popular apps that people might have. For example, they might have an LED bulb that changes colors and so on uh, with the Hue uh, app. The OmniLogic is going to be very similar to that. They are going to be able to go into the app and have total control of their pool. So just keep in mind those, uh, those homeowners that are, that are tech savvy or that prefer to have full control through their phone, now they can also do that with a swimming pool. And now we are going to start getting a little bit deeper into the uh, features that the OmniHub has, the OmniLogic, I'm sorry. It is a modular controller, so what that means is that it comes with four relays, but we are going to see how we can add more into that same base unit. It also, it is ready for a salt chlorinator without having to get a full panel. Uh, the salt chlorinator is just going to connect directly into the OmniLogic. We have a space for 12 breakers, 125 amps max. So if we have a heat pump, we can actually power it directly through the OmniLogic uh, sub-panel. And then the touchscreen, the, the uh, control panel is actually touchscreen, touch screen, and we're going to see some of the features that it has. And remember that this, uh, this controller is actually meant or it can be installed outside. So it is waterproof. It has a hinge with a door that we have taken the door off in order to show the panel itself. But it has a door that is going to keep all of this uh, covered and make sure that there's uh, no water intrusion to our uh, connections. Here we see a little bit more about the uh, display and the control panel. Like we said, remember, it is a touchscreen controller and all of the programming is going to be done through this controller. The other benefits that we have with this uh, display is that it has an ethernet or an internet uh, connection. So if the customer already has an ethernet cable in the equipment room, or if it is a new construction, you should definitely ask your homeowner or, or the contractor to actually run a, a Ethernet cable directly into the equipment room. That way it makes it future proof. We also have a USB port. The USB port is going to be used both to backup configurations and it is also going to be used for firmware upgrades. And we're going to see a little bit later on how we can uh, upgrade the uh, the software that comes already with the controller. This touch screen also is going to show you the pool status here on the left. If we have multiple bodies of water, we are going to see it here by these dots. In this case, it is a pool and the second is a, is a spa, but you're able to scroll through the different bodies of water in order to show their status. And at the same time, these uh, icons on the right-hand side of the screen that can be modified. You can have an icon for your favorites or your homeowner's favorites. So it makes it a lot easier for them to go directly into what they want. If they want to put a, a button, an icon here that is going to say, okay, uh, spa mode. And just by the press of one button, the speed on the pump is going to go up. The valves are going to change automatically. The uh, temperature on the heater is going to go to 104 or 40 Celsius. And the, and the light can go to a certain color. And if we have a blower, obviously, for the spa, then it is going to turn on the blower. All of that, we're just pressing a single button. And that's what makes it a lot easier, obviously, for the homeowner uh, to uh, work with their system and, and understand their pool. 
This uh, display also has a built-in diagnostics tool. And what it's going to do is going to change the color on the screen as we see here on the uh, bottom right. So when it goes to yellow or amber, it is giving you a warning. So it is something that we should check. And then when it goes into red, obviously it is uh, bringing to your attention some, uh, some problem. It can be a cord on a sensor that has been cut, for example, and it is not receiving the signal anymore. But we're having that built-in uh, self-diagnostics that it makes it a lot easier to work with the system as well. And as a reminder, it is a resistive, a resistive touchscreen. What that means is that we can use our finger, we can use a stylus, as we see here, or we can even, uh, wearing gloves, we are still able to manipulate the system. So it is not like your phone where you need your actual finger in order to work with it. This one with gloves, it is going to, uh, it is not going to be a problem. And here we get a little bit into lighting and the and the app. The app is the, on on the app. The customer is going to be able to select exactly the color that they want on on our color logic lights. They can select fixed colors as we see here, or they can actually select uh, color shows that are going to automatically be changing from one color to the other. For those of us that participated uh, on the presentation last week on on lighting and water features. Then remember the omnidirect mode. That omnidirect mode, what, what it means is that now the lights are going to go directly into the colors that the customer chooses without having to jump through one color to the other. And remember that omnidirect mode is only available when the customer is using both color logic lights from Hayward and they are using an omni automation system. So the other benefits that it has, instead of, in, instead of the light just having 10 fixed colors, now it has 20 fixed colors. We have the standard 10, but then we also have these warm colors that we see here on the right. So we are going to get some of the yellows, we're going to get the warm whites, we're going to get the teals. So the customer is going to have more options now as to what they, they prefer to, to have on their pool. On top of that, it is also going to allow us to dim the lights by 20% increments. So if for whatever reason the pool is too bright and they want to dim it down, they are able to do it with this. And it is also going to allow us to increase or decrease the speed on the color shows. Remember that we have seven color shows that are automatically changing from one color to the other. Well, now with the Omnidirect, they are actually able to go in and change the speed of those color shows. And just as a reminder, whenever we are installing the an Omni automation system with color logic lights, it is important to use one of these uh, snobbers. This snobber is just a filter, and that is going to help us filter any kind of uh, uh, discrepancy that we might have between the controller and the transformer, because the controller is going to be sending the commands really fast to the lights, and this filter is going to help to make sure that those commands don't get uh, loose in translation, let's say that the uh, the lights actually receive the full commands without it uh, going into a different color that we don't want. Without the snubber, we can have an issue to where by the time the customer selects the color, it might not be exactly what the uh, uh, what what is portrayed in the pool. So it's very important to always use a snubber. We offer one. It is, uh, it is inexpensive, it is just a few dollars, it is not, a, it is not a, a, an expensive part, but it's going to help to make sure that the communication between our controller and the lights is, uh, is a perfect communication. So make sure that we always recommend that. It is only uh, needed one per transformer. So we can have multiple lights on a single transformer, that is not an issue, it is just one snubber per transformer. And now I'm going to go ahead and pass this presentation to Manny, our technical manager, and he's going to finish uh, showing us how to install the OmniLogic and all of the components that, uh, that are available with the system. Go ahead, Manny. Good afternoon to everybody. My name is Manny Ixlewak, and uh, today we'll be talking about automation, how to build one of these systems, uh, which uh, we call OmniLogic. First of all, I wanna say thank you for being with us. And let's start with this first step, okay? So, 
whenever you buy one of these systems, which which we call it, at, the part number will be at HL base. Sorry about that. Okay, so whenever we get one of these systems, this is what's going to be included with the box. This is what you're going to be able to control and what is what is ready with. So the relay will come with high voltage relays up to four. Okay, actually it will come with four. What can you control with this? You can control anything that is high voltage on and off. For example, blowers or single speed pumps or simply a um, a, a pump to the system just uh, to inject acid, muriatic acid, for example, in case we have control over pH. What else can we do with this? Well, we'll have a connection for low voltage relays. In this case, that will be for heaters, uh, either gas or heat pumps. Then we're going to have four sockets so we can plug in up to four actuator valves. The system will come with three temperature sensors, but you can plug up to five from the beginning. So if you need more, you can just add them. We'll see the sensors a little bit after. It comes with the MSP, the display, which is the uh, control where you're gonna be doing the programming and where you're gonna be doing all the uh, schedules or turning things on and off or simply seeing other things. It's chlorinator ready or chlorination ready. All you gotta do is buy one of ourselves, a T cell or turbo cell, and then just plug it in. You don't need a complete system for that, just a cell. And then it's ready for sense of dispense. You're just going to add the sense of dispense part of it and just do the uh, connection, and you'll have access to a pH level, not only chlorine level. And it's ready for internet connection. We'll talk about that in, in just a second. The panel. It ha it's capable to control up to 125 amps, and it's got 12 slots for single breakers. The application, you just get it online. It's free. You reg register your product, and then you can control every single thing in your pool from any place in this world. Here's what's going to look like on the inside. Let me pinpoint here a little bit of what it's going to look, what, what, what these items are. We'll talk about the board in just a few minutes, but on the bottom, you'll see that we have our four, four relays that come with the system in that one part number. Transformer on the right side to energize the controller and also the chlorinator and a whole bunch of uh, push areas so you can do wire connections, electrical connections for any one of your pieces of equipment. This is the board on the inside, okay? So on the left side here, we have a letter A. If you look at the left top, this letter A is where you're gonna be doing your wire connections for the sensors. Water sensor, air sensor, and solar sensor if you have one, and two more spots for two more sensors. Then you have letter B. Letter B will be for low voltage relays. That's where you're gonna be doing your low voltage connections for up to four heaters or heat pumps. And then on letter C, which is on the, on the left middle of this page, you'll have the slots or the sockets where you can plug in your valve electronic actuators. On letter E, those are the most important ones from the ones that I'm going to be saying, but on the letter E, that's where you do the connection for anything that connects through data. I'm talking about uh, variable speed pumps. Those communicate through low voltage cables. Um, but they communicate through data to signals. Uh, it's all digital. We call these RS-485 communication buses. And then we also have uh, the letter D and the F, which are also plugs for communication. For example, the system of sense and dispense chemical chemistry. On the In the middle, you have letter J. This is going to allow us to connect to flow meters or flow sensors not flow meters, but flow sensors. And one of them, if you do have a chlorinator, you're going to need a flow sensor for that. And then on the letter K right below it, that's where you're going to be plugging in your cell. You have other things here, like connections for the, for the transform and all that. Remember all this information, you're going to be receiving them. But I just want to make sure that uh, to show you here that we have letters like H on the top middle. And this is a fuse to protect your system in case we have a bad 
actuator valve. And in the bottom middle, letter P, we have fuses that control the incoming power to protect the system. And then on the right side, we have more fuses, like for example, um, letter U, which will be uh, to protect the system in case we have a bad chlorinator cell. So all these fuses are gonna be protecting our main board, our main system, our main OmniLogic. So if you ever have an issue with the chlorinator cell not producing and you get a code, because you will get codes, uh, so it can make everything so much easier for you, um, this is gonna be a good reference. All you gotta do is just unplug the system, check the fuse, make sure they're good, and otherwise you're gonna have to swap it. Also, this controller will have LED lights that will be blinking green. When they're blinking green, that means everything's good. If for some reason they're not blinking or they're blinking red, that, that means that we're gonna have a little issue and that's where we, set, we need to start looking into our fuses to make sure they're good. When you buy one of these systems, there will be a little package inside of the box where you're gonna have the uh, installation manual and at the same time, you'll have several little fuses to keep them. So don't throw them away when you get it. Put them away in case we need them. Remember that these fuses is to protect your system from outside um, voltage shortage or, or inclusive a defective item in the system itself. This is what it's gonna look like. The panel, when we talk about the breaker slots, again, up to, up to 12. You can put either Thomas and Betts, GE, Siemens, Cutler Hammer, Murray, or Square D. Those are the most common ones, and it's compatible with all of them. Also has a couple bars in the, in, the, in the center, on the outside of the center, which you can use for all your neutrals. And you have two of them, so you have more uh, space for connections. And then we have a grounding bar on the right side. And same thing, you have knockouts right in the back, not only on the bottom and on the side. So this panel will have more space for cables and that's why it's a little bit bigger. Here we can see the connection for the sensors and why do we need a water sensor? Maybe some of you will ask me that question. Well, we need to know what the temperature of the water is in order to turn on a heater. If the system does not know what temperature the water has, it's not gonna turn it on for safety. So keep that in mind, air sensor, that's very important for places where it gets very cold. The system needs to know how cold it gets outside. Maybe it will be important to turn on the equipment when it's off so the water doesn't get to a freeze point and then start blowing up equipment or your pipes. So it's another safety we have there. And then we have optional spots for more sensors like solar sensor or simply if we have two separate pools with their own heaters, uh, that way we can control both temperatures individually. If we do a connection with one of our gas heaters, it's just simply, you can see here the, the it, right in the center, it's simply a two wire connection. It's, a ju it's just a dry contact. So all the system does is whenever you turn it on, what it does is it closes that contact to cost continuity and have the voltage, the low voltage of the heater go back to it and then come on. In the case of a gas heater, we would have, we're gonna, we're gonna have to program the heater to a BO mode in this, and what this means is that the heater will be on standby until the automation controls it or turns it on. If we do a connection on a variable speed pump, we'll have this, what you can see here, it's a TriStar 900. This is the inside of the driver. On the red side, we have our 240 volt connection with this ground, which is the green wire. And then on the, on, the, on the left side, I'm sorry, the right side I said, and then on the left side, we will have our RS4485 connection, which is gonna be plugged uh, to the controller of the pump itself. If we do automation, then we're gonna have to disconnect that controller. We're not gonna use it anymore since everything's gonna be controlled through automation. And we just take this wire that comes with the VS pump, the variable speed pump, and just run those wires. Just make sure that we have the correct colors on the correct spot. This is also in the installation manual, but again, you're gonna be receiving this in color. So, save it so whenever you have one of those um, installations you can use this as a, as a reference 
In the case that we have to install or that we want to install a TriStar 950, uh, this model prior to 2018 had a little different um, setup on the driver and used only two wires. In this case, we just used a communication bus and we run two wires, seven on the pump to number two on the OmniHub or the OmniLogic and the eight to number three. Our pumps, Super, uh, Super Pump 700, TriStar 950, and MaxFlow 500, now in days they come with this new type of driver. The installation is pretty much the same, it's just a different setup, and it's a lot better driver. On the right side, we'll have our connection for 120 or 240 volts, it's ground. And on the left side, we will have this same little black bar RS485, we're just going to have to disconnect the controller, those four little wires, ignore them, and then run our new set of wires that comes with the pump to the automation. And it's going to be pretty much the same. Letter A on the pump to number two in OmniLogic, B to number three in the communication spot or communication, which is like the number four on the pump to the number four in the OmniLogic. Very simple to install. Okay. So we're still talking about how to build one of these OmniLogic. So let's go to step number two. Well, again, our system comes with four relays. If you need something bigger than that, you don't have to buy a different model or a different part number. All you gotta do is simply just add relays. You can get these relays individually. We can add one to make it five, two to make it six. In the case that we have to go to number seven, then we have to acquire this, what we call a relay bank. This relay bank will make the system a eight relay system automatically. Remember, there's four inside of the box, and then this is four more. So that will give us a total of eight. If for some reason we gotta add one more, we can do that, and a total of up to 10. So each one of these panels can handle high voltage relays up to 10. If you need more than that, I mean a very big pool, then we have an exp expansion panel to make it even bigger. Now, remember, everything that com communicates through data, for example, BS pumps or the um, salt and dispense system or even remote controls do not require any kind of relay, so we're not going to be losing any one of these uh, first four or up to 10 of them. This is what this is what's going to look like after you do the installation, adding, adding that relay bank and two more. As you can see here, now we have a total of 10 high voltage relays. Each one of those relays, including the um, relay bank, has a special connector and the board has a special slot where this plugs in. Every single one of the spots on the board, it's labeled. So you can't miss that. It will say relay bank or it will, it will, it will say additional relay. So um, relays from the competition are not going to be compatible with us because of the wire connection. And here we can see how we can connect something that is 240 to one of these relays, for example, a blower or 110, maybe a, a single speed pump of three quarter horsepower, for example, or simply we can use a GFCI breaker uh, to do connections to a transformer for our pool lights that are low voltage. So you can do all those connections. Number three, let's continue with building this, this system. So what else can we add to the system? Well, these are the controllers that we can add and also a, an expansion valve, okay? Uh, here on the bottom right, you're gonna have them now in days, we have this new controller, which is a spa side control. That way, when you build a brand new pool, you can install this little mud box and then run the controller, install that mud box on the concrete or on the top of the spa. And then when you're inside of the spa, all you gotta do is just reach and turn things on and off. It's waterproof. There's no problem with it being in the sun. So that's a good thing to, to have when we, when we do a new construction. And then we also have these two controllers. What's the difference between both of them between the color, besides the color? Well, the white one on the left, that will be a house mount control. So that will be for indoors. And then the one on the right, that it will, that's wireless and it could be outdoors. Also it's waterproof, weatherproof, so you can have it right by the pool. 
The connection for both of them will be really easy. It's simply just a four wire conductor. Uh, just follow the colors and make sure they align. One to one, two to two, three to three, and four to four. The expansion valve, this expansion valve is a um, expansion panel. It's a board that plugs in to the top of the main board, as you can see on the upper left of the panel on the picture. What, to, what is this for? Well, this one, remember that our system comes with slots for five temperature sensors, four, four valve actuators, and four heaters or low voltage connections. Well, with this, you can double pretty much that. You control four sensors more, four actuators more, and also four heaters more. So a total of eight heaters can be controlled individually. So you can turn on whichever one you want, whenever you want, just by pressing a button on your cell phone, pretty much. Number four, ethernet or Wi-Fi. Well, the system has a connection for the ethernet cable, that's ready. If you can run a cable, just plug it in, or you can go with Wi-Fi. If you do go with Wi-Fi, here we can see the connection for the antenna. It is very simple, and so you have both options. And I'll talk a little bit more about that connection in just a minute. And then number five will be to add whatever chemistry uh, system you want. In this case, we're talking about sense of dispense. What is sense of dispense? Well, sense of dispense, it's just like having a pool guy 24-7 checking your water and adding a small amount of chemical to keep your water balanced. So have better control or total control over your pH and over chlorination through ORP, convenient auto, um, automation, and then we're going to avoid highs and lows on the chemical chemi chemistry levels. This is what it looks like on the top left. It's just a little canister or chamber where water flows through and it has two sensors. So if you tell the system to the one pH of 7.4, it will try to keep it at 7.4 by adding chemicals. For example, on the bottom left, we have this little container with a little pump. And what it does is if your pH goes up, it will turn on that pump, which will be sucking in this example, muriatic acid and injecting it to the water, to your pool water. And then whenever it goes down to the pH you selected, it will just shut off and it will not it will not bring your chemistry lower than that. So it's just total control over chemistry. So again, you're going to be having all those spikes in your water when we talk about chemistry. So that will make your water cleaner and healthier for a longer time, a longer period of time. Also, besides the uh, sense of dispense, which is the part number HL chem. So again, for for me, right for um, pH control, you can do the muriatic acid with that tank, like I, like I just mentioned a little bit ago, or even you can go with the CO2 uh, dosing. That will be pretty much up to you if you want to go with CO2, but we can go both ways. We can do either one of these to control your pH. Connection, as I mentioned uh, when, I saw, when we saw the board, is simply just mounted on the wall, plug it in and the system will have control over that. And again, here you can see how you can adjust your parameters, how you can adjust the pH that you want for your pool and at the same time, the ORP level. In the case of adding chlorination by salt, then we can add one of these turbo cells to it. We can add the C15, which is the same as a, a T940 or a Blue Essence 35, those chlorinators will be for pools up to 40,000 gallons. Or we can connect a T cell 9, which is the same thing as a Aquarine 9, 925 cell. We can just plug it in, and that's chlorinator cells that are up to 25,000 gallons pool size. Or even a T5 or a T3. Those are a little bit smaller. T5, it's up to 20,000 gallons. Same thing with Blue Essence 20. And a T3 will be for pools up to 15,000 gallons. A little bit smaller. 
update and configuration. What is this? Well, update and configuration is a nice thing to know because every single time through, through the year, there'll probably, probably be about two um, updates, maybe more, but every single update will allow us to do more things, create more things, or simply changes like now multiple languages. Now we can program program this in, in Spanish or in French or either other languages. So by doing updates, we're actually updating our system to the newest software and that is completely free. Okay, in this case, we can see on the bottom right how we have English selected and obviously it's in English. So when we first turn on one of these systems, it's gonna ask, it's gonna tell you, welcome to Hayward select your language and after you select your language you'll have something like this for programming now we're not going to go into programming today but we will have a seminar next week just to remind you and we'll go in deep in the programming step by step we'll show you how to program these systems since everything it's made out of questions so the system will ask you for example uh, what type of pump do you have for filtration? Where is it connected? What's the maximum speed? What kind of heater you have? Do you have any heaters? Yes, what kind of heater, uh, gas heater? What's the maximum temperature you want it to go to for safety? So everything is gonna be based out of questions like uh, do you have features, water features? Yes, is it connected to a valve? No, to a relay? Yes, so everything is best based out of questions and again, We'll see this next week. And don't forget for the updates, this is gonna be the web page which is gonna send us directly to uh, the updating part of it. All I recommend is we get a new USB that is formatted and empty and only use it for these software updates. That way when you plug it in, the system doesn't get confused and knows which software to find in order to update the correct part or item in the system. Today we are updated to 3.2. In the future we'll have more updates. We'll be able to control um, variable speed pumps and lights from the competition and we're going to be able to control more bodies of water, more items and new little things including new uh, platforms to make the, the, the playing with the system easier for you. So again, this will be part of the programming. How do you update? This is what we're gonna be going through on, on next Tuesday. And then almost at the end here, we can see how for the internet, we can do the connection wired uh, from a modem or simply um, if, it, if you don't have access to that, then just go with uh, wireless. The antenna has to get be getting, um, has to be separate, but you can add this antenna to the system as long as you have a good Wi-Fi signal with your cell phone standing in front of the system, then the system will detect it. Detect it. And how do you program the Wi-Fi? Uh, just like you do it on your on your cell phone. You choose the Wi-Fi, you enter the pass uh, password, and then you're good to go. The connection is simple on the antenna. It will be already all set up inside of the box, so don't disconnect any cables. But in case you need to know, the antenna comes with a 15-foot Ethernet cable that connects to this little device. Here on the here in the in the middle, and then on the PoE, it's going to go up to the PoE, and then you're going to have a DC connection which goes from this little device to the main board on the on the OmniLogic, and then you will have another three foot cable, Ethernet cable that goes from this little device from LAN up to the MSP or controller of the OmniLogic. So again, having a good signal for Wi-Fi, it's going to be very important. Um, to know. So for my part, I just want to say thank you very much for being with us. We, um, we're going to have robotic cleaners tomorrow, so make sure you you come and, and you, you listen to us on this new robotic cleaners that we have in either in also suction cleaners. And I'm going to pass this on to Roberto Sablon so he can finish this presentation. So thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you, Manny. Just as a reminder, as a recap, all of the uh, functions that we have with the OmniLogic, we are able to control up to 
10 high voltage relays. We have a wireless uh, controller, wireless remote, and also a hardwire that can be installed on the wall. We obviously have access through our app on the phone. And this is going to allow us to control everything on the pool from pumps, heaters, lighting, uh, sanitization. We have multiple bodies of water, then that is not a problem. Remember that once we have the base unit, we just add the components that we need in order to expand it. We don't have to change anything on the base unit. It can be for a single body of water or multiple bodies of water. And this is going to make the configuration a lot easier. Um, and if you need help, if you have a project and you don't know exactly what to offer, let us know. Get in touch with us. We're going to be sharing our contact information, but get in touch with us. And that way we are able to help you select those uh, first projects with the equipment that you need in order to fully automate it. As a reminder, remember tomorrow we have Armatic uh, pool cleaners. Make sure that you sign up for each of the webinars in uh, independent, uh, independently because, because you sign up for one doesn't mean you're signing up for the others. And also there is a website, hayward-webinar.com, where we are going to be able to go in and we are going to be uploading by the end of this week all of the English webinars as well. That way, uh, webinars from the previous two weeks, week uh, one and week two, are all going to be uploaded. And you can see the recordings. Not only that, but get a copy of the presentation. And you're also going to be able to download supporting information for those webinars. And then on next Tuesday, we are going to be getting into automation for all of the Omni uh, programming. So make sure that you sign up for that one because that one is a follow up to this presentation today. And we are going to show you how easy it is to program the system that you, uh, you just uh, saw. Here is our contact information. If you have any questions, please write it down on the chat section. And if not, you can get in touch with us directly using this uh, email address. My name is uh, Roberto Sablon, sales manager for Latin America and the Caribbean. And then we also had uh, Manny Ixlawak today, which is our technical manager for Latin America and the Caribbean. And he did the presentation on all of our uh, connections. I don't see that we have any questions, so that's great. Thanks a lot for participating and joining us during this webinar and hope that you can join us uh, tomorrow for the uh, robotics. Have a great day and hopefully we will see you tomorrow. Thank you.